2019 Annual Cup Match Classic between defending champion Somerset Cricket Club and challengers St. George's Cricket Club will take place on Thursday, August 1st and Friday, August 2nd at the Wellington Oval in St. George. The game starts at 10 a.m. both days. This is Sean Tucker. And I'm Jason Ford. Join us along with Dean Miners and Lorenzo Tucker as your voice of summer team brings you live play-by-play -play coverage of Bermuda's premier sporting event on Hot 107.5, live television coverage on Channel 82, and live streaming on burnews.com. That's the 2019 Annual Cup Match Classic on Thursday, August 1st and Friday, August 2nd with Bermuda's favorite cricket commentators, The Voice of Summer. Welcome to Bernie's News and Views. I'm your host, Don Burgess, and uh, we're here at the House Bermuda. And this actually might be the happiest time of the year in Bermuda where everyone's uh, talking about cup match. Come Friday night, uh, for half the island, it might not be the happiest time of the year. <laughs> um, but until then, we enjoy the, you know, ribbing each other back and forth and, and rooting and supporting our team. Uh, one thing I want to say is we, at the start here, um, I've got two uh, cup match towels, blue for St. George's, blue and red for Somerset. Um, if you like the video today and put what team you, you support, we'll have a draw tonight and give away the two little towels to one supporter for each team. Um, the draw will take place at 9 o'clock tonight. So uh, our guests today are the captains, Jordan De Silva, welcome. Thank you, Don. And mm -hmm. Lionel Can, welcome. Thank you, Don. So uh, let's start a little bit. We'll, we'll go back, and I know I've probably asked you guys this a million times before uh, for print interviews, but what is your earliest memory of cup match? And we'll start with uh, the cup holders, Jordan. <laughs> Uh, my first one was actually in St. George's. The first cup match I ever went to was 1999. I believe Charlie Marshall got out on 98 or so that year. Um, I can't remember the result, but that was my first one. That was before I even started playing cricket at all. That was just, you know, a family outing. My dad actually used to start using that to get me up for school days. Like, yeah, hey, we're going to cup match today, get up, and then he realized it's not cup match. But <laughs> that's how excited I was for it. So, yeah, I was nine years old then. That would be my first memory of going to one. Yeah, uh, mine starts at seven, eight years old. My grandfather used to take me to cup match in St. George's because, uh, you know, was after Cunny Cup was always a cup match. And I used to stand next to uh, all the cricketers. Back then they had built those things down, down St. George's. Mm -hmm. And my favorite player, believe it or not, was Perry Mabry. Mm -hmm. And I used to stand next to Perry Mabry and um, he, he'll talk to me while he was in, in the pavilion. And um, that's when I learned how to swing bowl. But obviously from St. David's, I had to stick with St. George's. So like seven years old was my first memory going to cup matches. When did you know you were always going to be rooting for Somerset? Was your, was you, did you come from a Somerset family? Yeah, everyone was for Somerset. Um, my mom's side of the family was more from the east, but, but, but my dad's side was all red and blue. But, <laughs> but um, I didn't really take a team until I actually started playing cricket when I got into the Somerset program. Up until then, the cup match was just cricket to me. Hmm. You know, it wasn't either team to be honest. But then once I got into the into the system, then obviously you can't you can't be playing for Somerset's youth team talking about <laughs> your for St George's. You know, so you really didn't really have a choice. You had to pick a side. Then yeah. that was when I was probably about twelve. You know, so I, I had been getting cup match for about three or four years before I even took up cricket. And then once I got into the system, which was under Vincent yeah. Reed at that time, yeah. you know, then the uh, chips just fell after that. And, and your first set of trials to try to make the team what was that like to be honest i can't even remember that year <laughs> the, the only thing i remember about that year was 2004 was my fresh year that i it was actually the fresh year i got picked as reserve the only thing i remember from that year was that i was torn with the under 15s we were in the cayman islands that year and we were coming back on the sunday after the teams got picked and someone was on the phone with their mom and they said oh let jordan know congratulations and i'm like congratulations for what I really didn't know, and then when I got home, my mom told me that oh, you got picked reserve for cup match, which I didn't think was possible if you didn't play mm -hmm. the final trial. That that's honestly the only thing I remember from that year. I cannot remember any of the trial games, what I did in them, nothing. But I I remember that that conversation. Yeah, that's pretty impressive to be picked and not play. Yeah, I mean, no, it was unheard of. You know, even as a reserve, and I was only fourteen at that time. So at that point, you're thinking, fourteen years old, somebody must be playing a prank on me or something. But it it was true. So to be honest, that's the only thing I remember from that year. I don't remember any of the trials or my performances or anything. Lionel, well, for me, it was uh, Easton Connie 
getting in at Eastern County at 14 years old, and my progression was uh, cricket. But it was me, I had to wait my turn, you know, because I had uh, Noel Gibbons, Cleavy Wade, Arnold Mendes, Clay Smith, Randall Smith. It was no way for me to get into St. George's team. So uh, me, I had to go through the system, I had to earn my way in. And um, um, actually I went to Somerset, my father is for Somerset, mm -hmm. and it took me Somerset to uh, train actually. I was training with Somerset. I had two training sessions with Somerset and um, I remember that night they came onto the field and said, whoever's not financial members has to leave the field and they called out my name. Mm -hmm. And I had to leave the field, that was a Thursday night. And we played St. George's on the Saturday and I made a hundred. And when I came off the field, it was four selectors from St. George's waiting for me in the change room saying, what, what is this you're going to Somerset? You know, you're guaranteed in our team. <laughs> and that's the only way I got in St. George's that year because they figured I was going to go to Somerset. So they had to uh, leave out Cleavy or Noel and let me in. But I was really, really younger than that, but I had to wait my turn. There was so much quality cricketers back then. I mean, you're both on the, on the selection committees. Um, <coughs> What thought process goes through when you see somebody young trying to make the team and then, you know, normally they might be for Somerset and they're over training with St. George's or vice versa. Um, I, I think Logan Jones, I think he's a Somerset supporter. I saw he's, he's in the final trial for, for St. George's this year. Is there any, like, oh, we need to get this person back, we want them for the future sort of thing? Um, I haven't really had that issue yet since I've been captain in, cool. in the four years. I mean, you see players like Logan, he also played Cole Cockmatch for St. George's mm -hmm. on the weekend. Um, I haven't really had that issue. I mean, the thing that I think about when I think about a young player is how I was thinking when they were meeting and, and picking the team. It's like, I don't have to go through that anymore because I'm in the meeting, you know. But, but I haven't really had that dilemma in terms of, you know, somebody that's, uh, you know, maybe 50-50, mm -hmm. you know, it, to us is because we have open invitation for our trial. So if you want to come, you come, you know, if you don't, then we know you're not interested, you know, so, so we take it as is that if, if, if you're interested in playing for Somerset, you'll show up. If you don't, then obviously you're not interested. So we haven't really had to deal with that type of dilemma, not since mm -hmm. I've been captain, but I'm sure it has happened beforehand. Well, um, yeah, um, as soon as you see a young talent and you think his head shows about everything, you want to get him into the team. I know when I became captain in 2006 in Somerset, and we had to, then I went back in 2008, we needed a spinner, and young Treo Govia Gro then, uh, he was 15 years old, he was young, and we was in the selection, and you know, the selection uh, guys were like, he's kind of young. I said, I don't care if he's young, we need a spinner, let's groom him, and take him. Mm -hmm. So I selected him at, uh, at 15 years old. But I mean, I, I believe if you're ready, you're ready. Um, nowadays, it's a lot easier for younger people to make it because teams aren't, back, back in the uh, 80s, 90s, you had set players that were very good and you had your team and then you might make one change. Now, if you're, you're a good cricketer, you're gonna get the opportunity. So for me, it's pretty easy. If you're young, you're good enough, you should get the opportunity. Well, uh, that's kind of interesting. There's two, th two things I wanna go off your, your comment there. Well, Captain in 2008, you, this is your third time around as captain. Yes. Yeah, so. uh, what's, what's, what's that like? I mean, last year you didn't play and, and now you're back in the team and not only back in the team as captain. Yeah, I mean, it's nice to be captain. I think I've always been a captain. And, you know, captains mm. are born, I believe, and um, I've always been a captain. And, you know, last year St. George's took a different route, you know, a lot of youngsters and a lot of cults. And obviously Somerset uh, put it to them, you know, mm -hmm. and we've learned from that, that that's not the road to take. You know, you need some sort of seniority around. So for me, it's, it's, it's easy for me to be a captain because I know what cup match is and I know how it feels for people and, and you know, emancipation and stuff. So mm -hmm. for me, I've, I've always groomed myself for it. So it's pretty easy for me. Yeah. The, the significance of the holiday, what does that mean to you guys? Well, we all know as Bermudians, you know, what it represents, you know, it represents a big, big day in our history. And every year we make sure that, that uh, we celebrate it properly. And as players, we know we have, we know we have responsibility to uphold that standard, you know, because at the end of the day, these are our two days, you know, no other country does what we do. So we have to make sure that we always are respectful, you know, play the game in the right spirit, because yes, it's not, 
it's not about the cricket, but at the end of the day, the cricket is the highlight of it. You know, it, it, Emancipation Day has nothing to do with cricket at the end of the day, but we know that that's what we use to, to celebrate it. You know, so we have to make sure that we always uh, hold ourselves to a higher standard. You know, cricket, it gets heated. You know, some of the St. George is better the league game, football, you know, he plays, you know, football for St. George's. It, it, it always is, you know, but a cup match, obviously, is just another pedestal. It's the best 22 players on the island. So, you know, we know we have to uphold the standard for everyone because everyone's looking. You know, in now 2019, the game's getting streamed in all sorts of different countries. You know, it's not like back in the day where you had to be there to witness it. People could witness it from everywhere. So the audience gets bigger, which means that, you know, there's more pressure on you to make sure that you hold that standard. Yeah. You, you talked about streaming. We ran the video at the beginning part, but I'll just take a moment <laughs> to, to reiterate. You know, Channel 82 locally is, is doing it. Um, Bird News has... has through the courtesy of Channel 82, we'll be streaming it on our website so people, you know, wherever you are in the world, you'll be able you'll be able to celebrate this day. Um, going back, you said uh, you know it's it, where chops and changes for teams. And I, I showed Jordan before you arrived, but like um, I did I did an analysis of the of the two teams for the past decade. Mm -hmm. So I'll show I'll show you first. Mm -hmm. So this is Somerset, mm -hmm. and this is. St. George's, mm -hmm. and and you can see like for Somerset that you know it's pretty consistent of who they're ch picking every year. Whereas St. George's, you know, you've got an, an average of almost four changes per year. Mm -hmm. How do you think that determine? I'll show that hold this up. I don't know if our audience will be able to see this very well. No, Dennis is shaking his head. But I, <laughs> I, I, how do you think that affects the team chemistry where you're having to make an average of four changes a year? Yeah, I mean, obviously it affects it, but, you know, it's a cycle, you know, when St. George is at the cup, <clears throat> I remember like 18 years we had the trophy, so it would have been reversed. So if you do the 70s, the 80s, mm -hmm. it would be more, and it's a cycle, and, you know, now Somerset uh, are the champions, so mm -hmm. they have to make less changes, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's like everything, it changes, so once St. George has got the trophy back, it will change back again. It's just that's the way it is. When you're trying to win a trophy, you're always taking chances. Mm -hmm. You know, um, for St. George's, we've had some unfortunate incidents where we couldn't, you know, we had young Landro Minus that would have been playing mm -hmm. for longevity, young for Craig Crockwell, to circumstances that we have to make changes. Right. You know, we've had some unfortunate incidents, but some of them are a very good team. They built a very good mm -hmm. unit. And what, what some had done was take a move from St. George's. <laughs> what, what happened was Somerset used to pick all the league, league players mm -hmm. and St. George's used to dominate. Mm -hmm. So what Somerset done was, well, you know, we can't keep losing like this. They went out, got the best players in Bermuda, they brought up Albert Steve, made him captain, you know, and started building a team like that. I mean, if you look at Somerset's team now, they only have three players that play league cricket for them. Like, you know, and St. George's, when we had all the outside players, you know, the Arnolds, the Cleavers and those, all the outside players, you know, we were dominating right. while well, Somerset were picking their league team. So I've always said that the best 22 players should be playing cup match. Yes, St. George's and Somerset host cup match, yeah. but we have to get away from them being, have to be from their club. Yeah. People won't pay money, a lot of money nowadays, mind you. Mm -hmm. It's exceptionally expensive to get a, a, a plot or something, you know, a cup match, and they want to see the best players. So until we get, do that, we'll, until both clubs, you know, get, playing the best players. That's the only way cup match needs to go. Yeah, I mean, part of the thing, I'm not old enough to remember, this even before my time, but like, you know, Somerset never used to pick anybody that lived across the bridge at one point. I mean, Cheesy Hughes um, mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the 50s was the first one to, to break that mold yes, yeah. and, and, and add to the strength of the team because, you know, mm -hmm. not everyone lives in Somerset or St. George's. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there were any boundaries for St. George's as well. No, well, I don't know. The only boundary in St. George's is, is St. David's. <laughs> Trying to get my St. David's parish. You know that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and, you know, it's, like I said, it's a cycle and yeah. the best players mm -hmm. uh, should be playing. What, what do you attribute uh, Somerset's success for this decade? Well, I think, first of all, like he said, everything is a cycle. Mm -hmm. You know, when I came mm -hmm. into the team, we didn't have the cup. And the year I got picked, there were two other coats along with me. There was two recalls. And then the next year, there's another four changes, you know. So if you don't have the cup, you've got to do things to, uh, to get, it, get it back. Now, obviously, we've been in a, a, a privileged position 
Whereas eight or nine of our guys are available every year, you know, they're performing throughout the season. So it's like, you know, the nucleus of our team stays together, you know, and like, like Lionel said, St. George has had that period when it was himself, Glenn Blakeney, Charlie Marshall, Clay Smith. These guys played every year because they were successful, you know, so we had that privilege, you know, like before we, before we picked two coaches last year, our least experienced player had played seven cup matches, you know, so that, that's a privilege to have. You don't always have that, you know, and then obviously we've had to pick three coaches in the last two years. So it's all a cycle. Um, in terms of in terms of who has the cup and who doesn't because it doesn't make sense if you know if, if you lose one year whether you had the cup or not it doesn't make sense only making one change sometimes you know sometimes you just gotta um you know tear it up and start all over again and, and like he said when that day comes where the tables do turn we will probably end up having to do the same thing where we have maybe two or three guys that are just the undid and know that we've lost we might have to change it you know and 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 that goes back to him saying that the the age of of cults have become younger and younger you know you look at the last few years there's been a couple 17 year olds i remember i was in the team and joshua gilbert got got called he was 15 you know so the cycle just changes you know we had five or six league players in our team not too long ago but as our league team has gotten younger obviously the players in the cup match team change as well and then it's just a cycle we got one more in this year and then hopefully as years go on you know rather it's with the couple with with the couple without it that that number could grow again and it could be more 50 50 than it is now right i mean even now you, you have five players that have played six years or more in a row for cup matches um opposed to st george's that just has one Mackay. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah, and again, and and it all comes down the result. The result every year, you know, dictates you know what it, what the other team does. So you know, St. George's feel that they have to make four, five, six changes a year. Then that that's how it is, you know. And we just we just have to realize how how lucky we are to be in a position where we don't have to, you know, where we only have to make one or two changes. And this year they were two forced changes, not even you know just trying to change the team. So we just have to enjoy the period while we have it because we know it doesn't last forever. Right. And, e- and even then, you, you, a couple of guys who didn't make the team this year, Leverock and Daryl, you know, what are the chances that they might have made the team had circumstances been different? Don't answer but, that, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> it's a setup. No, but, but I mean, you know, everyone, everyone has a chance, you know, and, and again, it comes down to unfortunate circumstances, you know, that mm-hmm. I, I won't get into. But, you know, it's caught match things happen. You know, um, Kamal was unlucky. He couldn't, he, you know, suffered a few injuries, so he wasn't 100%, you know, at the end of the day, so... That's all it really came down to, and then Deontay just got overlooked. You know, we, we decided to go with the young lead player instead. Okay. So, uh, if you, let's talk about your Colts. Uh, so, um, Lionel, we'll start with you first. Yeah, our call. He's he's just come out of nowhere. He's been playing cricket for a bit, but he hasn't been. And this is um, McCoy McGowan. Yeah. Um, um, he hasn't been surprised, and he hasn't been burdened for his league team. So I find out and stuff. So he's been in our trials. He's been someone who's been training hard, and he's just come in his trials. He looks like a, you know, something brand new. He's very tall. He's he's very pacey, and um, he hits the deck pretty hard. So he was the best uh, bull in the last three trials. We had three trials this year. He was heads and shoulders above everyone, and earned his spot um, through his, his him bowling well. And he's exciting, you know. He's, he's very exciting. He's green, obviously. He's, he's brand new. And when he walks in that field and he sees 6,000 people, I'm pretty sure it would get to him a bit. It would take, probably take time to settle down, but yeah, he, he definitely earned his spot. He was definitely first on the list. Oh, but that's uh, part of the captain's responsibility too to... Definitely, to... definitely. I've had my talks with him already, so <laughs> yeah. And young Mr. Richards? Uh, yeah, LJ, you know, he's come up through our youth program, you know, as everyone knows, he's the coach's son, but he, he's someone that's put in the work over the years and playing playing league cricket with him. I don't have the, pri- I mean, Lionel doesn't have that privilege with McCoy. He doesn't, mm-hmm. he don't play with him every week, but I'm seeing LJ develop over the last four years where every year he gets better and better. The, um, he's just spent the last year in Cardiff, you know, the mm-hmm. school that's, that's, you know, a few Bermudian players have had the privilege of attending. And he's just, you know, every year he's gotten better. You know, since he's been back, his, I think he only has one school under 30, you know, out of, out of about six or seven innings, he scored up, I think, 350. So you can see the development. And he played, he played a very important innings on Saturday in difficult conditions. It didn't rain like it did in St. George's on Saturday, but it was overcast all morning. You know, the wicket was doing a bit, and he scored a very patient 46, you know, which, which, is, what we, which is what we're looking for in terms of on the day. You know, we lost Trey Mendes, who plays that type of innings, you know, very compact, you know, very good uh, technical player. And we felt that LJ mirrors him the closest. 
but but like but like I said, being able to watch him every week, you know, for the last three or four seasons to see his development, you know, we said, you know what, he's ready to go now, and we just look for him to step up on Thursday and Friday, you know, and we're in a position where he'll have experienced guys around him. You know, everyone that's betting around him has been there before multiple times, so you know, whenever he goes out there, you know, he will have guys out there to help him. Yeah, you sort of take the pressure off. That, yeah, exactly. That you sort of let them work work their way in. Exactly. And it's always it's control. always somebody being able to you know give him some wisdom on on the day. You know, whether it's a bowler he's facing or the conditions, whatever it might be. You know, we have that privilege where you know you got Stephen Otterbridge, you know, who's played twelve, thirteen cup matches. Mm-hmm. You know, Dion Stubbles out there as well. Chris Douglas. You know, it's, it's so many guys that can help him. What's it like in in the selection committee on the night? I mean. You said they're arguing points back and forth. How much influence does does the captain have in, in picking the team that you want? Well, with us, all these selectors, you know, it reiterate that, you know, at the end of the day, you're the one that goes on the field with these guys. So if you have a big problem with a selection or two, then you have the right to, well, I won't say stamp your authority, but say, you know what, you know, I want this guy. This year was actually the Mike Fresher as captain where we actually had debates about players. You know, every other year the team more or less picked itself, but then with the with the circumstances we were under this year, we had to we had to make some changes. So I mean, everyone was in agreement with what we did. You know, mm-hmm. no one walked out of that room unhappy in terms of they didn't get the team that they wanted. We all agreed on it, which was a good thing. But we did have a debate with him and a couple other players in terms of who who should take that batting spot. Mm-hmm. But but all in all, in the meetings that I've been in, you know, we've all been on the same page. This year was actually the first year with a couple of selectors. My first three years was all, all five people were the same. We had some changes this year because of um, unavailability, but it, it would all worked out, you know, because Jacoby and Jacon came in. These are guys that I've played three quarters of my career with. So we, we all understand each other and what we're looking for. And they've been there and done it as well, you know, especially Jacon in the last couple of years right before me. So for me, it was, it was smooth sailing. Just, you know, you, you just work out the final points to make sure that you got it right, but all of us were happy at the end of the night. Lionel? Well, it's been pretty easy for me, myself also, <coughs> from the first time I've been captain, because I always, me as captain, wanted to pick the best players. And when <coughs> I was contacted this year for St. George's, that was one of the things I said um, for, in the interview. If you guys want me to be captain, we have to pick the best players. I don't care where they play, whatever. And when they called me and said, I'll be captain, I knew already that we're going to pick the best players. So it was pretty easy this year. We had a lot of players to pick from, but the players that are picked picked ourselves to their performances. So it was, it was, it was pretty easy. I know you've probably heard this from people, probably said this to you, but like <coughs> they, they feel like in, at St. George's that there's too much club politics and who gets picked? Well, I'm pretty sure you hear that everywhere. Um, mm-hmm. It's just one of those things that, that happened. It's, St. George's is a very close-knitted community club. And the people that play for them happen to be family. And so you're going to have that sort of conflict or people, when you're not winning, everything comes out, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're winning with, with all your family and friends, <laughs> everybody's saying, make the family grow bigger, right? right? So it's unfortunately that right now, St. George's is going through a, pro- a time where they're losing and family are the people that are playing. So it's just a political thing, but um, you know, all I've heard this year is, is that it's, it's a very good team. Mm-hmm. What do you like about your vice captain, Anais? I mean, he stepped up big last year. Well, Anais comes from a cricket family, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, all the brothers, I mean, even the youngest brother now, Indy, I think he's better than all of them, to tell you <laughs> the truth. I mean, he's come on nice. First time I got to see him was this year. He is a very, very good little cricketer. So he come from the Cricket family and it was just a matter of time that he was actually going to be playing a cup match, right? And, and maybe be captain one day. Um, with him, he, he, his 100 last year would go a long way to him understanding his role. And when the team gets in trouble, how, how, um, what he has to do. Um, at the end of the day, I'm there to make sure that he's, he's the next captain to pass on any little knowledge I have. You know, we've had our talks now. We see things pretty straight he's a more of a defensive captain i'm more of an attacking captain but you know he has to find the right balance and he's young enough so hey he, he's got passion for st george's and he wants to win that's what you want on the field you want your players that are going to fight for you fight for the cause fight for what cup match means and those are the type of players that we pick 
Right. Interesting enough, Taron, I think I ran into him when he went and watched the football team. He was in Dallas. And, okay. And he was at the concession stand when I ran <laughs> into him out there. Well, what do you like about him as a, as a vice captain? Uh, with with Taron, is, is he's able, his able to bring people together. You know, he's one of those guys that he gets along with everyone. He's always the one where the team needs a little kick up the backside. He's the one that delivers it. You know, we're in the field and everyone's quiet. He's the one that comes in and says, look, you guys, you know, you know, he, he's just that player. He was like that before he was vice captain, which is why he made the step up. But he's always been one of those guys and his game shows it. You know, he goes out there, he opens the batting, you know, and everyone knows that opening batting is probably the hardest thing to do in cricket. And he goes out there and leads the way, you know, so he, so in his own way, he, he leads the team because he goes out there first. He always puts his head down, you know, I, I'm sure Lionel will attest, it's always a hard batsman to get out, you know, when he gets in, especially when he gets in. So he's always one of those guys that lead by example, you know, and he brings everyone together, he gets along with everyone, and his, he just keeps everyone close-knit, you know, that's been one of our successful, one of the reasons we've been successful recently is how close-knit we are, and Frey is one of the biggest reasons for that. But Somerset has a lot of big bats in, in, in your lineup. Um, even if somebody falters, there's always yeah. like there's always somebody else there getting a fifty or a hundred. But but that that's also part of it. We we look back over this period that we're here, and it's always somebody different. You know, Derek Brangman was MVP one year. Frey got it one year. Uh, Greg Mabry got it one year. Gennaro, you know, it's never the same person two years in a row. You know, you might have someone that's successful both years in a row, but it seems as if every year someone else takes up the baton. Last year was Dion Stovall. You know, a few years before that was Trey Mandas. You know, so I think we've, we've been privileged where we're not relying on just one person. You know, it was always so much talk about what are we going to do when Gennaro retires. But we found a way because somebody always steps up. You know, last time down St. George's, you know, come on, Lavrock came back into the team, had a good game. Uh, you know, so that's what it comes down to. You know, Chris Douglas scored his first 50 not too long ago. So of all the success that we had, Chris wasn't really involved in terms of the runs. And then he stepped up the last two years. Obviously, him and Frey had that big partnership to start last year. So that, that's one of the biggest reasons why we've been successful. Because every year, it seems like somebody takes the responsibility to make sure that we get over the line and not just relying on the same person year to year. What, what's it like when you're out on the field and, you, and, you, and you're in the bat first and the guys step up and they get that big partnership right from the start? Well, anyone will tell you, anyone that's been a captain uh -huh. to tell you, when you win the toss and bat, the last thing you want to see is a wicket fall early. Uh -huh. You know, so to see 100 go up on the board without loss, then 150, you sit there and say, okay, I guess I made the right decision. Uh -huh. and, and last year was more so because we wasn't 100% sold on batting first. It's a decision that we all came to when we got to the field. And obviously it paid off, but as a captain, it's like, it's like when you win the toss in the field. You know, you want to make sure that after a half hour, you've got two or three wickets because you have to justify your decision. So that when you're a captain, any decision that you make once it's justified, you know, you, you can feel easy about it. The last thing you want is to win the toss and bet and you're 20 for three, you know, or win the toss in the field and 100 without loss, you know. So, so to win the toss and bet, which is like I said, it's, and it's also something we hadn't done in a while. We hadn't batted first in cut match for a few years. So we went against the grain a little bit, but ultimately it paid off. So as captain, you can't really ask for more than that. Yeah, uh, all the betting pundits uh, who had bet bet for St. George's batting first last year lost out. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I knew they probably would have batted first if they won the tour. So yeah, we, like I said, we went completely against the grain from what we had been doing in years previous. Yeah. yeah. Same thing, you know, but at the opposite end. I mean, last year you were in the stands watching. Um, Seeing Somerset, but I was not in the stands watching. Okay. I was at home. I turned my TV on for an hour, and I started to cry, and I turned it off. <laughs> and, I, and then the last time, next time I turned on my TV was when uh, Somerset won. <laughs> I could not bear to watch. Yeah. It hurt me. Yeah. Really painful. Yes. Yeah. I'm a cricketer. I mean, hey, I'm I'm passionate. You know. So yeah, I'm very emotional type of cricketer. We and lose or draw, and I just could not bear to watch it. It, it seemed like a few times over the last um, four or five years, St. George's have gone out and they've lost a lot of wickets early. Mm -hmm. How do you try to steady the ship at that point? Well, the, the, that is the problem. That, that's the biggest problem. St. George's, uh, uh, since 2012, have not even been in the match. So, you know, the, the biggest thing is that your first thing is you have to get a total. You know, you want to get at least 190, 200, and you're in the match. But Somerset has, has been on top ever since 2012. So they've had, had the chance to dictate what goes on for the whole two days. So what you want to do is make sure you consolidate and then your middle order, you know, capitalizes on the start. But we haven't had 
any run scored early on um, this year hopefully has changed. You know, uh, Rodney, he's in some very good form. Mm -hmm. um, OJ has been called back. Uh, Trey is in good, good form also. So, you know, we want some early, uh, somebody to score like a, a 60 or 70. Do you feel like you have the, the, the batsman this year? Oh, yeah, to, yeah. To I'm, I'm very confident that we have the best. I mean, if something <laughs> blows away this year, oh, I'll take my head off. It's amazing. They're a great championship mm -hmm. team. Some are very undeserved to be champions. But this, this is the first time since 2011 that, I would say 2009, that we've had a complete team. Some said, we, although we lost in 2012, some said have been coming and coming for a while. I mean, 2008 we had us in trouble, 2009, 2010, 2011 they could have won, you know? So they, it, it didn't just happen. It, they were coming and coming. It was only destined before we actually lost. So this is probably the best team we've had in 10 years. That could compete with that can compete with Somerset. Yeah, I, I think like fans probably well maybe they don't, but like appreciate your candor about you know what's been happening at St. George's over the last few years. And, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know you can't hide it; it's there. You have to talk about it to get to the problems, and then you move on from it. You can't you can't continue to hide what's been going on. Yeah. It, now you're at the opposite end of the spectrum. You know, last culminating with last year's two for one. Um, what was that like? playing that and, and, and achieving something that hadn't been achieved for 70 years for, for, for Somerset. Well, to be honest, I had no idea about that, that part of it until later that night. You know, when, when we won, it's just about winning first, <clears throat> you know, and then obviously winning as captain is a different feeling, you know, not many people get the privilege of captain in cup match and then even fewer have the privilege of winning as captain. So that was first for me, you know, then the historical significance came later. But uh, the, the relief was that we didn't field the whole second day for a draw, to be quite honest with you, because Anais' innings, you know, almost got him over the line in terms of getting a positive result. So that was the relief part of it, you know. And then, of course, the two, for, two to one, that, that was, that's been Coach's baby since he took over. It really has. Since 2012, that's been his thing, you know. Every time, every time we even think about just betting out the day or something, he's like, nope, we're going to, you know what I mean? That's, it's been his thing. So he finally got that as well, because... He took over the year that we won the cup back. You know, we had we had loss a few years. You know, two thousand. He brings up two thousand eleven. He scored the winning runs that year. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but um, and then coach came back the next year, and and since then he has just he's just been hopping on that. You know, because it's been so successful. So I guess as a coach, the coaches are never satisfied. You know, so this year he will probably say he wants a two to one by more runs. That's just how coaches are. You know, so that was his thing. You know, so to to achieve that. You know, it's, and we just want to continue the success. You know, whether it's a win, whether it's a draw, whether it's a win by one run, it doesn't really matter to us. We just want to continue the positive momentum we've built up over the last seven years. Is is there any pressure to, to continue the run? I mean, the part of the thing is, like, especially after last year was such a huge victory. Is this the pressure mount to keep the run going and make this like possibly the greatest Somerset team ever? Well, it's always pressure because you, you it's always pressure to not lose. You know, they don't really have the pressure of not losing as we do. That that just how it would be if they were the champions. You know, they know that it's it's always more pressure when you have something to lose. You know, the 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 challengers could always go all out, and then if they fall short, it's like okay, we had to do that. So that's the added pressure as it is. But in terms of being one of the greatest teams ever. We're just looking to stamp our, you know, we want to just build our dynasty, you know, whether it's compared to some of the teams. I mean, St. George has had the greatest teams, you know, there's, there's teams under Bummy Simons and all that, but we're just looking to just continue what we're doing now, you know, and it, at the end of it, if it puts us up on a, somewhere with the other great teams, then so be it. But we're just looking to just continue. You know, every year is pressure because you can't lose. You know, if you lose the cup, then you never know when you're going to get it back at the end of the day. So it's pressure anyway. It's, you know, so, yeah, you know, we just handle it every year, do the things that work for us. You know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Everyone knows that saying. Mm -hmm. And you just hope that, that the same things that have been working work every year. But we, also, but we also know that sometimes you have to change your game plan and, you know, and your mentality about things. And then at the end of the day, you hope it works out. You know, one of the things I like is, like, both you guys are just reeling off names and people and things How, from previous cup matches. How important is it to be a student of, or a student of the history of, of Cup Match and know what's happened before? You know more history than me. <laughs> oh, that's, that's my age, right? So, um, um, yeah, I mean, you have to know where you're going. You have to know where you came from, right? So um, I know in my era, that's all that older people talk to you. Ask Cup Match players were always around the club. Uh, you come to trials, training. It was always someone there and giving you the history. 
you know, they'll approach you, sit down and tell you, hey, youngster, come here, let's have a word. And they, they tell you about their history, history before them. Um, nowadays, it's a little different. You know, the youngsters don't really worry about history. They worry about today. They live for today. You know, the world has changed. Something that we really need to get back to them understanding where their grandparents played, great grandfathers played and stuff. My, grand, my great great grandfather played in the first cup match and I didn't know that until I had played five cup matches. Mm -hmm. You know, so hi history it, it needs to be done and then they'll take it on to the field, but it's not enough being done to, for the history of cup match and actually for what it, what it means. Mm -hmm. But for us, we played passion. I know Jordan, since Jordan started um, playing senior cricket, mm -hmm. You know, he plays with a lot of passion, he plays with a lot of heart. He's been my roommate on tour, actually, you know, <laughs> yeah. traveling with Bermuda. And he knows how I am. You know, we play with heart. We leave everything onto the, onto the field and play the game in the right spirit. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with Lionel. I don't think not enough, not enough of it is talked, you know, this time of year. You know, we, we were at Camden House last year for the Premier's reception, and that's probably where you get your most exposure to cut match, you know, from, from back in the day where all the former players come up. I remember, well, it was one guy that I met last year. I actually sat in his camp last year at Eastern Colonies because his, his related to, to uh, somebody in my family. And I didn't know he played a cop match at that point. He came up to take a picture of the former players. I said, I didn't know you played a cop match. You know, so there's a lot of, a lot of things where that happened, you know, where people talk to you and you just, sometimes you don't know who they are just because it's not talked about enough. Like my, uh, we had our water boys attend last night, and one of them, I think one of them had a conversation with Bommy Simons. He doesn't have a clue who Bommy Simons is, but Bommy Simons is probably the most successful captain that we're here. You know, so, it, it, like, I agree with him 100%. It's not done, it's not talked about enough. You know, we, we used to have the uh, former cup match players association. They, you know, they come up on the week of cup match, and, you know, and just have a talk with the players, you know, about what they do for the former players and stuff like that there. But in terms of what happened back in the 40s and 50s and 60s, where it all started, and obviously before then, yeah. no, it's definitely not enough of it done. But, but he also said that the, that the kids and all this, they don't want to hear about all that. Mm -hmm. They really don't. Like, if they, can't, if they can't play it or see it on a the computer, they don't want to hear about it. They don't want to look in a school book from... 1930 they just don't you know so i guess the, the few that are still interested in that have to try hard to make sure that that continues but it is an uphill battle maybe we can persuade ea sports to do a video game version yes and something. you have you select the legends yeah like, something <laughs> if you don't do that i don't see how else it will work yeah. <laughs> dennis if you can bring up the the list of the teams um just we'll, we'll start with 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 st george's um no Somerset, Somerset, Somerset. Okay, thank you. Oh, Somerset, Somerset. Okay, we'll go with the cup holders. Champions first. Champions first. Champions first. Champions first. Um, uh, we talked a little about Taryn already, but Stephen Otterbridge. Well, he's now the outer statesman of our team. You know, mm -hmm. if Gennaro Tucker retired, Jacon Adnes are gone. You know, Jacoby. He's now the one left. You know, he's the one that that that's bending everyone together. Like how I spoke with about with Taryn earlier. You know, as as the, he's he's taking the role. Of the senior player, because he is the senior player, and I actually think it's a bit of a gap between him and the next person, which I think is Dion. So those are the two that are like our older thirties. So um, he, he's definitely taking the mantle. He had his best cup match last year. You know that was easily his best innings. You know, unfortunately for him, and even for us as a team, he wasn't able to get a hundred. You know, because for all our good work, none of our guys made a hundred, which was a bit unfortunate. But um, it, we're just glad to see him because every time it seems like somebody writes Stephen off, he. He proved himself again. You know, I remember my fresh year as captain in 2016. We were in early trouble. St. George's had us three down real early, and he and Gennaro saved the day for us. You know, and he, you know, I think he got out on 49 that year, and he put his head down, and, and that's the Stephen Otterbridge that we know. You know, people ask me all the time. I say, look, when I'm in trouble, I want to be able to call on Stephen Otterbridge because more times than not, he 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 uh, gives you what you need. You know, and he's taking that, that role even more now as being the, the older person at the group. Because right. we Douglas. have such a young team, Steve. Yeah. Chris Douglas? Chris, Chris is Chris. You know, he's, he's one of our more, he, and Lionel will know, he's one of our more unique players, you know, but he's, he's the type of guy you have to have in your team because it's always going. You know, if, if, the, if, the teams put on, if the other teams put on a partnership, Chris is somebody that just gets on you. You know, like, come on, you guys, like, you know, and he, or he says a joke or something. He's just one of them type of guys. Like, he's the one that I'll put underneath the helmet. Just, even if the ball's not going to come to him, just put him there because I know that he'll make a nuisance of himself. Sort of like how a footballer does. He's the cricket version of that. And, and I said earlier, you know, for all our success, you know, it was without him. You know, he, 
he kept getting 20s and 30s and getting starts and, and getting out. But the last two years, he's really taken the responsibility of making sure that we get off to a good start. You know, I think he hit the first over last year for 16 runs or something. So he takes that mental as a, as his, as a senior player as well. You know, we came in the same year in 2008. You know, so we we'll played pretty much our whole cup match careers together. You know, we've been on tours and stuff. But Chris is a guy, whether he's making runs or not, you have to have him in your team. He's always, he always asks him to build. You know, he's one of them type of guys. As a captain, he never lets you rest because he's always on you about something. But you need guys like that in your team. Greg Mary? Greg, just like LJ, you know, I watch me and Greg's play for Somerset our whole careers. Neither one of us have played for any, any other team. You know, we, we've been on tours together. We played at the Under-19 World Cup together. I know what Greg brings. You know, he, he was man of the match. He was MVP his coat year. You know, he pretty much won the cup back for us that year in 2012, you know, when we didn't have it for a few years. Greg, you know, and, and Red Bull is, is Greg's specialty. You know, I don't think it's too many guys in, in Bermuda that build the Red Bull better than Greg and cup matches where he, he likes to step up. Uh, Malachi. Malachi is our, is our, we know Stevens our, our elder statesman in terms of the team, but, but Malachi is our senior bowler. You know, he opens the bowling for us. I know he's coming up on a milestone this year. I know he's looking for 50 wickets. I'm not 100% sure what he's on, but I do know that 50 wickets is in his sight this year. The uh, last couple of years, he's really stepped up. You know, I think he's took five, four or five wickets, you know, each, each cup match, probably since I've been captain. You know, he's really, he's really made a, a point to step up as the, as the senior bowler and, gather, and like, like Taron does with the bat, he makes sure to get us off to a good start with the ball. You've mentioned Dion a couple of times already. Um, anything you want to add? To be honest, we're, we're waiting for Dion to explode with the bat. You know, he hasn't, and he will admit that he hasn't had the best of times with the bat in the cup match. Obviously, he, he won MVP last year for his exploits with the ball, but that's the type of cricket that Dion is. He's a winner. He hates losing probably more than anyone I've ever met. You know, to be honest with you, whether it's with Rangers, whether it's with us, whether it's with Bermuda, he doesn't like to lose, you know, so he, to the very end, you know, I remember last year when, when Onias, when they were celebrating Onias' 100, me and him were actually together waiting for the celebration to end, and he just looked at me and said, don't worry, Skip, we're going to win this game. And then he took the ball and got the last two wickets. You know, that's just the type of player he is. And like I said, we're just, we're just waiting for him to explode with the bat, and, and we feel like it's going to be this year. Quasi James? Crazy, another one. Yeah, crazy, another one. You know, he's at Willacott's now, but his one that came through the program with me. You know, I actually coached him in, in our youth summer camps some years back, probably about 10 years back now. So I'm seeing Crazy grow as a player. He's, he's stepped up on his batting. You know, he opens the batting for his club team. Obviously, he won't be able to do Well, he probably won't be able to do that for us. He might have to take a different role in the team. But he was a coach last year. I thought he built extremely well. You know, he had to take the new ball in the second innings because of... Um, circumstances before opening bowlers and he took the mantle well. He took two wickets in that second innings. You know, he got the opener out and then got St. George's captain out, you know, so that's two pretty decent wickets. So look for more from him again this year. He built well in the trial, which which cemented his place for this year. So we're just looking for him to do the same. Stephen Bremer? Bremer, another one that that I've that I've been able to play a lot of cricket with. We're around the same age, you know, qualify for the World Cup together. He uh he made he wasn't really interested i wouldn't say he wasn't interested but he hadn't really made himself available for cup matches previous to last year and then last year he had a very good season with cleveland and they earned his spot in the trial and here's another one like i say with chris he's always he's always keeping you busy you know as captain you can't sleep in his room because he's always throwing an idea at you or his you know he's telling you that we need to do that you know he's just always one of them guys and and this year he'll be our wicket keeper and that's a perfect world for him because anybody that's played with him will tell you he doesn't stop talking <laughs> Um, and Derek Brangman, uh, you had him back in the squad. Yeah, uh, you know, um, unfortunate circumstances last year, which, which made him unavailable, especially so close to cup match. But he's a very important player. I mean, I don't know these the exact stats, but I don't. I'm pretty sure no one has more wickets in Bermuda cricket than him. And I would say the last four or five years, he's one of them guys. He's very accurate. You know, for a spinner, he's not a big turner of the ball, but he's accurate, and he just. He just seems to make things happen. And he's another one, a cup match MVP. And that year he did it for all three points in the game. You know, he got some runs, took some wickets, some catches, and another good player to have in the team. You know what you're going to get from him with everything. So it's another good one to have. And the last one on your team, I'll let Lionel describe. Jordan De Silva. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jordan, hot worker, came through the youth ranks, materialized into a quality cricketer, all-rounder. Jordan's probably got two or three centuries this year. He's a type of player that you always want in your team. You know what you're going to get with him. Um, swing bowler, left arm, variety, and somebody who has a lot of respect for the game. 
right. and, and his players. So yeah, they don't have anybody better to captain Somerset than him. He deserves to be captain. I'm not going to be that nice for you, you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <laughs> we're telling the truth. I'm just telling the truth. <laughs> and, and, and as we switch to St. George's, I'm, we're going to flip it, and we'll we'll start with with Lionel Cam Jordan. No problem, man. Like like Lionel said earlier, you know, we've been roommates on tour, you know, so we know each other very well. He he was he was the out. He was one of the older players for St. George's when I became a coach, you know, and. One thing about Lionel, whatever role you need him to play as a batsman, he could do. I'm playing cup matches where Lionel scored 100 or 50 balls, and I'm playing cup matches where Lionel scored 30 or 100 balls. He's that type of player where no matter what situation you need him to play, he could do either. You know, and he's, he's a very good leader. You know, players respect him. He knows the game, obviously. He's very passionate about cricket, as passionate as they come. And, you know, unfortunately, he couldn't play last year, but, you know, St. George said, you know, we're in a situation, and this is the best man for the job. And I agree with him that, you know, that for his experience and for his knowledge of cricket, he's yeah. definitely the best bet for captain. Oh, okay. Very good. Right? Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lionel, Treddy. Um, Treddy. Treddy is, is probably the best opening investment in Bermuda that has not shared Bermuda what it, his, the class that he has in the classic. Sort of like a Dion Stubble. Cup match, he hasn't click, kicked on. A, a player that deserves his spot, very elegant, left-handed. Um, very passionate, you know, in your face type of person, and um, I'm looking for him to perform better than what he's been doing. Yeah. Uh, Tamiko Wilson. Tamiko, hard worker. Um, Tamiko, from young, he was one of the top cricketers in Bermuda. He stopped playing for a bit. He came back. He plays league cricket for St George's. One thing about St George's, we have abundance of talent with wicket keepers. We have a Sinclair Smith, Okira, the national team. So he's been getting pushed. Um, We've talked to Miko as the batsman. Um, we could keep batsman and I expect him to make some runs of this cup match. Uh, Makai, last year's captain. Makai. Um, <laughs> Makai is, is a new player than last year. He played captain cup match obviously last year at St. George's. Um, he's growing this year as a, as a player. He scored a lot of runs this year. Sometimes you just need to get away. Some people need to get away. I think it was a good decision by him leaving to get away. His game is growing. He's, he's in the national program now. He's made sacrifices. And, you know, I'm pretty sure nobody expected him to be picked this year because he was captain last year. Usually when somebody leaves their club, they don't get picked. But, you know, we stuck by our guns and, and we've picked him and I expect him to be scoring. He's someone that's going to be for the future for St. George's for like the next 10 years. So I'm looking for big things from him. He's got this opportunity. I'm sure he'll take it. Will he get a thousand runs like you? <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. I don't know. But um, <laughs> nobody starts off wanting to score a thousand runs. It takes a lot of work and commitment. So yeah. hopefully, you know, he can be that person. Alan Douglas Jr. Alan Douglas. Um, Alan Douglas is the person that can win cup match for you by yourself. Um, he's the most explosive batsman in Bermuda by far. Um, He's, he scores a lot of runs. He's yet to show cup match. He's probably had one good innings in cup match. I think he scored a 70 yeah, in 2016 times. when we put on that partnership after being in trouble. But Alan Douglas knows that he's selling Bermuda short. This year he says that he's going to be a big bet, and you know I'm trusting him with that. As Somerset knows, if Alan Douglas gets off, we're in the match. Zico Burgess, my favorite player's last name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zico. Zico is probably one of the fastest bowlers in Bermuda that um, is, is developing. I think the national team is helping these guys this year. All I'm training with the national team is helping Zico. Zico cemented his place in the final trial. Um, he almost got a hat trick, but on the wicket that we're going to be playing on is conducive for his type of bowling. So he'll be one of the guys that will be leading our attack. And you have OJ pitcher back? Uh, the great OJ. Um, OJ comes, it's, it's so nice to have OJ back. I'm sure the whole of Bermuda wants OJ to be playing cup match. He's one of the best players in Bermuda. And when he's on, he's the best batsman in Bermuda. And um, he's a senior player. OJ has been there before. He scored a few 90s in cup match. You know, he scored a lot of runs in cup match. So I look to him to lead. He'll bat number four this year. I look for him to lead and everybody will, will build around him. Justin Pitcher. <laughs> Justin. Well, everybody knows Justin, what he brings to the table. You know, Justin's got five wickets in cup match. He's got 50 runs in cup match. 
everybody knows what Justin picture. Justin's grown this year now. He's, he's matured a lot. He has a, a new son. And I think that's helped him. Um, Justin's a competitor. As you saw, Easton Connie, he never gives up. He's you know, somebody that plays from the heart and um, a, a worthy guy. And he'll another builder that will lead our attack also. Yeah, and the last one that we haven't talked about yet today, Rodney Trot. Rodney. Um, Rodney has not been playing for a couple of years, mm -hmm. but obviously his stats and stuff speak for itself. Rodney fights to the end. Um, he's developed into an open investment this year. He scored a lot of runs opening bet in this year. He'll open bet for us. And he's, he's a spin bowler. Rodney is a person that can, you know, get wickets and cut match, stabilize if you want to. A very good fielder. And he has knowledge of the game. So he'll be close to us when we're making our decisions. It'll be a few decisions that will have to be made as a team. It's one thing I enjoyed about Somerset before Jordan even became captain. You had your my, my nucleus, you had your Nero, you had your Khan, you had your Kirby, you know, then Jordan came Triple in. Triple J. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, they all came together and, and to make decisions. You want everybody to feel welcome making decisions. I won't be making all decisions on my own. And Rodney is one of the guys that will, I will lean to, to, to help make decisions. Having that experience, for, and this is for both of you, having that experience to rely on, how does that take some of the pressure off? I mean, at the end of the day, it's still your decision, but, mm -hmm. but having other experience and wisdom there on the field with you. Well, for me, I, I was fortunate because when I, when I took over the captaincy, I had three former captains still in my team, you know, the three that he just named off. So, so that makes your life a lot easier. But also, like I said earlier, you know, we have, other than two players or three players, everyone's played, you know, seven, eight plus cup matches. So everyone's been there and done that. Even though they might not have been captain, you know, they've been around, you know, they, they play against these guys every week because that's the name. You play against each other every week. So people know people's weaknesses and strengths. And some guys play against other people more often. You know, like if, if I'm with somebody, for example, Chris, Chris will probably know Alan Douglas more than I do, not just because they're cousins, but because they play together. Mm -hmm. You know, so small things like that make a big difference, you know, or, or, or with Freight, Taron Freight might know, you know, what puts Zico off. They play together, you know, so you have to take from everyone. And, and the fact that we have so much experienced guys, and even one of, you know, somebody like Stephen Bremer, who only played one cup match, you know, he's older than me as well, you know, so. I have that privilege where I've got a lot of guys around me and it does make a difference the more you know because obviously the more heads you know the easier the work is so it's definitely it's definitely something that you look to utilize what's probably the funniest sledging comment you've heard during cup match sledging yeah well we probably can't say that here to be honest <laughs> it's been it's been a lot it's been so many to be honest not one sticks out but the, the, when they happen you just you know it's like Rather, it's to you or to somebody else, but yeah, no, yeah. I can't. Nothing stands out for me. He's playing more than me. He I'll might remember you, I, one. I mean, but uh, <laughs> what, what happens when the field stays on the field? Yeah. I can tell you this legend that happens nowadays, it, it's nothing compared to when I first started playing. With, like, uh, I'm not afraid to call names of Charlie Marshall, and <laughs> yeah. Herbie Bascoms, and Noel Gibbons, and you know, those sort of things. That was real sledging, you know, but I, we don't use that type of sledging these days. But a little bit of banter goes yeah. on. The thing is today that maybe it's, it has its plus and its minuses is that most of the players nowadays are friends. Mm -hmm. And I find myself sometimes they're too friendly. Mm -hmm. You know, these guys on the field. Like when we were, when I first started playing, when you came to the wicket, you felt uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, you had to be get set in for like an hour before you felt comfortable because they were only saying things to you. Now the players might say a little joke to you or something like that, but they're become more friendly. So. You know, but what what was said on the field is said, but it is a line, mm -hmm. and as long as you is being respectful, sledging it's okay. But if people cross the line, I think as captains we need to make sure that 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 line, you know, it's you know, because you don't want anybody saying things really bad things about people's moms or, mm -hmm. you know, family members and different things. It has to be a line, and make sure that as captains we are heard to that. Right, it's all part of the psychological part of of what goes into the game and, and trying to keep, you know, trying to keep guys from getting comfortable maybe. Yeah, of course, it yeah. comes with the game. It's part and parcel of the game. Yeah. yeah, at the end of the day, you know, because betting, you know, 80% of betting is mental. You know, so if you, if you have a guy that, that's trying to focus and you're always saying something to him, you know, we're human, you know, you, you might not respond to it, but you hear it. You know, and then you have guys that obviously Colts, Colts are nervous. I remember my first time betting, I could barely hold the bet, and most people are like that. So, so you, you, don't want them, you don't want them to find a comfort zone because then that's when they can hurt you. 
you know, and, and nobody's more vulnerable as a bachelor than when they first come to the wicket, and especially when it's a cult for the first time, you know. Mm. So. One of the greatest things was that, um, and I learned from Clay Smith, mm. who was turn all that banter and let it turn you on, make you vibe. Yeah. And so I used to love when people say things to me that made me even more mm. successful. I hate when it's quiet. You know, when it's quiet, I don't, I'm like, oh, God, it's lonely out there. But I love listening to the banter, you know what I mean, and all of that. Type. And Charlie Marshall and was one of those players as well. As well. You know, we, we got to the point where you just don't <laughs> say anything, because Charlie will come out there and conversate with you. And I remember one year, I kept one of those cop matches, it might have been Charlie's last one, where one of the younger guys must have said something to him. And all the senior players were like, no, no, don't engage with him, because that's what he wants. Because that's how he feels comfortable by talking to the opposition. Yeah. So you have some players where they actually enjoy it and they actually thrive on it, like Lionel said. His one of them, Charlie, was probably the biggest one for me. He would come out there and start a whole conversation, and you're going back and forth, and then it's got 100. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas, whereas now it's like, you know, don't talk to him. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's all about knowing each other. Uh, one of uh, the readers on uh, Bernie's face, sports Facebook page, if you haven't uh, signed up for it, you can sign up. We do a lot of sports stuff, that's things that don't necessarily make the website, but have different kinds of conversations. But one person um, asked, uh, how do you guys prepare mentally for cup match? What sort of mental strengthening do you do, you do for, for the team or for the players? Well, I think for most people, it's about playing in front of a crowd like that. You know, for guys that aren't used to it, and even for the ones that are used to it, you only do it once a year. It's not something that you're accustomed to. So people are always thinking about making a mistake. That's always the first thing in their mind, you know, making a mistake and six, 7,000 people witness it. But I think you just have to get yourself to a point where you just have to remember it's still cricket. You know, no matter how much people is dirty, rules are different than normal Saturdays and Sundays, but it's cricket. And you have to believe that you're here for a reason. You know, and that's what we try to tell everyone that comes into the team. It's like, you're not here by mistake. You know, you're here because you're good enough and you just have to remember that. You know, this, this guy is about to build to you, builds to you every week. It's not, you know, it's nothing different, but you just have, I think you have to get used to the people, the atmosphere, because it's something that you don't experience, which is which why I think it makes it even harder for Colts. You know, because in international cricket, you could play in front of big crowds, but then you get your test, you know, your first test is different. Mm -hmm. But for Bermuda, because you only play in front of small groups every week, the biggest thing is playing in front of a whole host of people. And like I said, now in this day and age, it's all over the world. It's not just the people at the ground. I think that's the biggest thing is getting used to that, that part of it. Mm. I'm like Jordan said, you know what I mean? It's the crowd for, for most people. Some, some people get play in front of crowds, but... What I tell my youngsters is that they're coming in, live normal, your normal side of life. Every day you do the same thing, just continue on. You know, if you, if you go to bed at 1 o'clock in the morning every night, go to bed at 1 o'clock at cup match. Don't change the way that you live, the same normal, you want your life as normal as possible. That's, that, that's the biggest advice I give to them. Now, we've mentioned Charlie a couple times. I think Charlie's last cup match, he was 46, maybe 47. Uh, 48, he was 48. He's 48. Do you expect to be playing? I'm not making it. I'm not making it. <laughs> what do you know? Uh, 46. Two years? I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, I enjoy cricket. I enjoy cricket. I think mm. cricket, mm. no, it is like I was telling those guys last night was that cricket needs the senior players now more than ever. Mm. You know, all the senior players got out at the same time. Cricket is on the decline right now because we don't have enough senior players playing, we leave the youngsters to play all by us. It's a big gap. So we need the senior crickers involved doing the right things though. It don't make sense being a senior cricket and doing the wrong things, right? You want to pass on the knowledge and stuff. You have to be active. You still have to be good enough. You can't just be say you can't live off the pass every innings that you're starting from zero. So, you know, I feel good myself, I feel good, I'm I'm in good shape and um, you know I'll continue on. If someone's to put some licks on me this year, though, I don't know how much more I could take. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, if the, if the boys are growing this year and the game is good, you know, if we win, if, we, if the gap is closing and they want me to continue on, I'll, I'll definitely continue on, you know. I'm here for the game. I love the game, the sport. So age, age has no limits. Right. Well, uh, I just, I'm just saying because you're at a different stage of life than mm -hmm. Jordan. <laughs> and, and, you, and you're a cup match legend. Well, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's fair to say. You're one of the very few people who score a thousand runs. Mm -hmm. When do you decide, you know, that for yourself, you know, I'm going to go out on my own terms. This mm -hmm. is, I want to go here. I mean, obviously you want to go out with a victory. That mm -hmm. would be ideal. Um, 
the biggest thing for me is everyone says, why do you still want to play cup match? Why do you want to be a part of it? You know, you've done everything, you've been successful, and you know, you could just walk away from it. But I don't believe in life like that. I feel, I feel that if I have something to offer, I'm going to give it back. If I need captain this year, I go and someone's support. Look, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, it will hurt, but I'm giving my all to, my all to the sport. I'm not worrying about going out on a high or, or whatever. As long as I have, <laughs> I'm enjoying cricket, I enjoy playing with the youngsters. I love, the biggest turn on for me is watching a youngster out there playing a cover drive and nobody moves. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, I'm, I'm not afraid to say, I cry at times. You know, we're playing Connie last week, I said, what you doing? Why are you crying? I said, because we are going to keep this cup. Yeah. We were 10 nervous from probably losing the trophy. If I was playing for Baylor's Bay, I was like, we would have won this game easy. But we escaped. And why are you crying? And I said, because passion. You know, so as long as I'm still having those sort of emotions and, and feeling, I know I'm in the right place. I'll well, continue on playing. I can hear the little tremble in your voice as you're speaking. Yeah, I can feel the passion that you have. It's, it's just like that, watching commercials and watching yeah, games and stuff yeah. like that. I still get, I still feel it. You know what I mean? So as long as I'm feeling that, I'm, I'm continuing on. Jordan, how long do you think you continue playing or, or wanting to be captain? Well, I mean, I've got, a, I've got a long way to go to reach finals, not just his age, but just his stature in terms of cup match, you know, and, and, I, and I understand that. I mean, but right now, you know, I'm not even 30 years old yet, you know, but I, I haven't really put a timeline on, on my career. But one thing, obviously, I'm not there yet, but one thing that I've always heard from players that have retired recently is that once they feel like they're stopping a younger player from progressing, that's when they feel like they need to get out. And it all comes back down to the passion. So if you wake up one day, like, like I always say that, if you're, if you're picked in cup match, whether you're 18 or whether you're 38, 40, if you don't wake up that Thursday morning and are anxious to play, then you probably shouldn't be here. You know, that, that's just being up because that's the pinnacle of our local sport. You know, so, so the guys that I've spoken to has just said where they just got to, like Jacom was the most recent one last year. He just said he just got to the point where you're not enjoying it anymore. You know, and luckily for Lionel, you know, at his age, you're still enjoying it. And if you're enjoying it and you could still give to the, like if you still feel as if you're, making the team better, then why not? You know, you could be 50 if you feel you're making the team better. There's no reason why, you know, you should play, you know. But uh, like like on Sunday, I was watching the Cold Cup match team, you know. Somerset had a 13-year-old bowler that you probably saw in the newspaper today, you know, and he took four wickets the day before that. So if you get to a point where you're like, you know, his getting hindered because of an older player, sometimes it just, you know, it, it, every situation is different. And being, you're the only person that knows that. So I might get, it might be natural where I say, you know what, I don't want to be captain anymore. You know, I might be 35 when I say I don't want to play anymore. But I just think that you just enjoy the time that you've got, you know, because rather it could be from injury, you know, family, anything could happen where, you know, it could just stop at any time. So right now it's just about enjoying it. So right now all I'm focused on is 2019 cup match and then after that I'll worry about 2020 and so uh, <laughs> yeah, that's just really being honest. Okay, so an hour has already passed very, very quickly and I could probably sit here and talk with you guys cup match and cricket for another hour <laughs> with, without a problem. But I'll, I'll let you each have a, a, a chance to say something to, to your followers or, or to, the, to the general public. Um, and we'll, we'll start with Lionel, we'll give the cup holders the last word. Yeah, first of all, I'd like for everyone to come and enjoy Cup Match, people that are coming to the game. Uh, it's deemed to be a very exciting game. Um, if you're not, just be safe throughout the summer. Um, Cup Match, while you're swimming, doing family, or just relaxing, watching the television. Just want everybody to understand, take a moment to reflect what Emancipation Day is, and just enjoy your Cup Match. Same, really. You know, the, the summers of fans, you know, make, make the journey. You know, the game will be exciting, whether win, lose or draw, it will be an exciting two days. Hopefully, you know, Mother Nature doesn't, you know, interrupt like it has the last couple of days. And, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good holiday. It always is. You know, I always say whenever I do any interviews that these are Bermuda's days. Nobody mm -hmm. else does this. You know, we take off the two days, we play cricket and just enjoy yourself, you know, whether you're away, whether you're at the beach, whether you come to the game or not, you know, just just enjoy it. Be safe. You know, be around your family, you know, support your team, whether it's Somerset, whether it's St. George's. You have to pick a team. I don't want to hear all this neutral stuff. You <laughs> have to pick a team. Yeah, but, you know, just, just enjoy it. Be safe and enjoy it. That's all. I appreciate both of you guys being here no to, to talk about Cup Match. Um, just as one last reminder, um, if you want one of these towels, just put a comment with Team You're For uh, underneath, the, underneath the video. And we'll hold, I'll hold a draw later tonight to, to award the two towels and, 
and see who it is. Also, one little bit of business keeping. Um, we are, we'll be streaming the match uh, on the Burn News website, so you can also watch on Channel 82. That's another way. I'll be live tweeting the match as as usual, trying to do keep the stats and, <laughs> uh, and make comments. And, uh, as I was telling Jordan earlier today, I have a copy of um, uh, Alma Chap Hunt's book that he wrote after 50 years, the first 50 years of cut match. So mm -hmm. I use that for reference. So I knew that. Somerset hadn't had a two for one okay, since yeah. since the 1940s because it, it was recorded in there. So um, if you're out elsewhere and you can't be uh, live streaming or you don't have the bandwidth, you can just check the tweets out of Bernie Sports. I want everyone not to only have a beautiful day today, but have a beautiful day tomorrow, Thursday, Friday. Enjoy your cup match. Wear your red and blue pri proudly or your blue and blue proudly. <laughs> Uh, kneel your neighbors in a friendly way uh, and just really hope that everyone uh, stays safe and enjoys a couple of glorious days of cricket and just remember you know why the purpose of what we're we're celebrating here Emancipation Day August 1st 1834 I'm Don Burgess your host for Burn News News and Views glad that you could join us today have a beautiful day and a beautiful weekend 2019 Annual Cup Match Classic between defending champion Somerset Cricket Club and challengers St. George's Cricket Club will take place on Thursday, August 1st and Friday, August 2nd at the Wellington Oval in St. George. The game starts at 10 a.m. both days. This is Sean Tucker. And I'm Jason Ford. Join us along with Dean Miners and Lorenzo Tucker as your voice of summer team brings you live play-by-play -play coverage of Bermuda's premier sporting event on Hot 107.5, live television coverage on Channel 82, and live streaming on burnnews.com. That's the 2019 Annual Cup Match Classic on Thursday, August 1st and Friday, August 2nd with Bermuda's favorite cricket commentators, The Voice of Summer.